Hello again from beautiful southern Los Angeles, you know, the South Bay area on this early evening. We're having another um, California wine. This goes back to my trip to the Santa Ines area in May, you know, Los Olivos. We had a long video to discuss with what I saw there and the people I met. And this is from one of the wineries, Holus Bolus. Holus Bolus from the PA Sierra 2018. From the PA means self-fruited, so it's not grafted. We had this discussion uh, last time, and Hani talked uh, at length about this, over in French, of course, in this tasting of uh, Thierry Germain in the Loire, and his approach to self-fruited. This is this whole thing with the phylloxera, and how it basically wiped out all these vines, and now people are, in some areas, are starting to uh, try self-fruited, uh, uh, grapes and wines and vines let's say sorry that are not grafted on phylloxera resistant stock so it's supposed to be you know they kind of try to see what it's going to give it's hard to compare as we discussed last time in this winery i could actually compare because they have they have two bottlings of sierra one is from the pier one is not from similar uh, from the same i think uh, vineyard which is a sebastiani uh, sebastiano vineyard in uh, santa barbara but I'm not going to do this now. I just want to decide if I like this wine or not and why. Uh, uh, 2018 was a great year in the area. They made some really good wines. I've tasted them all before I bought them, uh, you know, a few months ago when I was there. And now I'm just having one of these bottles and we're going to talk about this. These guys, the owners here are a young couple. He used to work for uh, Stoltman, so in an established winery. She still works, uh, Claire, I think her wife, uh, uh, and his Paul works for uh, Kermit Lynch on the marketing side, so she's really steeped in, in the wine business. They make uh, Syrah and Pinot Noir. The Pinot Noir I had was really amazing too, but that's for another day. This is the Syrah that is self-fruited, and it's a 2018. It's a little young, but you know why not? Uh, we can have some now and some in a few years. Um, on the nose, it's just very very floral to me I, I get this sort of uh, rose water which i don't get often but it's very striking at least to my nose maybe not others uh, the color is is pretty light it's a little bit viscous so it's kind of a nice you know level of alcohol at least in the glass that you look at it's uh, uh it's very clear it's organic the, these guys do really organic farming these vines are not very old uh, uh, because it, the winery, the winery itself is not old, and they've reworked some of the vineyards. They buy some grapes from some some people, and they have their own vineyard, which is called Joy Fantastic. And we can have we're gonna have some tasting about that some other time. But the the the, the sort of the the sharpness, the the, the rose water, the floral um, pepper. Also, you do really get that Syrah pepper, that old world Syrah pepper, which is actually quite something you know on the nose and uh, a little bit of that hard candy that comes with the acidity that you feel on the nose um, let's just give it a little bit more aeration mm. the tannins are very fine so they give it a little bit of that viscosity again that coating in the mouth that wraps around the fruit. Um, it's dark fruit here, so dark but sharp. So maybe not, maybe more like raspberry. Actually, I would say, on the fruit, you know, scale of things, a bit of that candy, a little bit of that candy, the pepperiness that you would want to achieve, that we would like, we like usually as as I guess European drinkers, in the European in the French uh, Syrahs. And the the finish is uh, soft. You know, it's there, it doesn't really, it's pretty subtle. It's not necessarily something that says, oh wow, I'm here and, I, and you can't think of anything else. It's just that that floral aspect that really keeps coming back to me with the white peppercorn that is so typical of the Northern Rhone and uh, it's just it's just so uh, elegant. And again, I don't know how much of that you can attribute to the graft, no graft, but this is a very good wine. 
uh, it's I think their seventh, their fourth vintage of this, you know, and with with own rooted wines and vines, you are really running against the clock because you just don't know how long it's going to be before they're attacked by phylloxera again. And they know that we talked about this and they're just going to keep going until they cannot go anymore. And this is basically the nature of this experiment, which adds another twist to these wines. Buy them while you can. You just don't know if they're going to be making them five, ten years from now. But these wines are really good now and they're going to be very good for a long time because they're very well crafted. And, and, uh, and that sort of they really, you know, have their own distinct characteristic, better or not, but they are really their own, growing on their own roots. As a result, they have, they're, they're a little bit uh, smaller. The, 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 the berries are smaller as well. They're more concentrated, so you can have a different wine from the one right next to it that's growing on a, on a, uh, on a, a graft. And, and again, it doesn't have to be better or worse, depending on your taste, but it is gonna be different, and it's worth really having both. A beautiful wine from this really nice area by a young couple, new winery. You know, just again, all the exciting stuff we talked about last time about the new things happening there. Cheers, and uh, we'll see you again soon.